Howdy folks, Bob here. Uh, Bob's Outdoor Engineering Adventures. Um, even though that's not the name, formal name of my channel. I may change it. So uh, today I'm going to try to solve the mystery um, of the um, axle end play on an 8 and 3 quarter Chrysler um, setup. And uh, you know, I've read everything online and uh, forums and all you get a bunch is a bickering and uh, you know, read the shop manual and get you a shop manual and blah blah, you know, everybody, you know, nobody wants to really tell you how to do it. Either um, they just have too big egos or either they don't really know how to do it. So I'm going to try and figure it out for myself because uh, I've spent months and months and I've only had just a few bits and pieces. So I'm going to try and put it all together. Uh, I'm going to start off by... Um, a couple years ago, I had a I, um, I had a, a sure grip unit. That's an aftermarket uh, built um, for my uh, Fury, my Plymouth Fury, which is what I do all the videos on. And uh, this is the original. Um, this is the original center section that came out of the car. Uh, it was a factory big block car, so um, this was a 742 case. No, it wasn't was. It still is. <laughs> Um, you can see, so there's the numbers there. Yeah, it's kind of shadowy. I'm trying to put it with this. Is, uh, you can probably read that there. Everything I do, I'm not a uh, Hollywood. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, anyway, enough of that. So, uh, I'm trying to get this uh, wrapped around in my head uh, how you adjust this end play with the um, passenger side uh, um, the adjustment selector on the passenger side the uh, driver side doesn't have any usually everybody has a uh, play like I do myself after a couple years of running started leaking after I did the seal and I did a seal video and this is going to be a follow-up to that because I did uh, I, I replaced the seal again um, I don't think it was the seal but um that everybody says that uh um, there's a puck nobody really shows it i've seen like one picture of this now this is an open diff so i'm assuming there's a puck that came in my aftermarket unit and i'm not taking my third member out to to look at it but um i guess i should just keep i should have had my uh, head cam on so i could um i already had it turned i don't know why i turned it back this thing's pretty heavy. I guess as everybody knows, it does not want to turn. It's kind of stuck in the box. So inside there, you can see that is the puck. You can't see all the way through the diff because uh, there's something uh, which they call the puck that's the axles apparently. It looks pretty shiny, so maybe the axle rides on that, which is kind of weird. Um, as far as uh, engineering standpoint, uh, if you have to push the puck over to push uh, put pressure on the axle, I guess the axle is always constantly hitting that. But I guess if there's lube on it, I don't know. It seems like that could eventually wear out, make noise, whatever. But uh, who am I to question the engineers? And so, as you can see, where the pin goes through the, you know, the camera keeps the screen there's the puck in the center but it's so hard to see there's like no light back here and I'm not dragging this thing out so I'm trying to get there's the puck you can see the pin that goes through it into the spider gears and you can see there's shiny on one end over there on that left side so that tells me that that puck plus there's if you see there there's a big gap there's uh, on one side, I mean, there's probably mm, three sixteenths of an inch where that puck can move back and forth. Um, so that is the puck. That's the mysterious puck that rides back and forth between your axles.
Howdy folks. Bob back again. From Bob's Outdoor Engineering Adventures. So today this is the hopefully uh, uh, the last saga in figuring out my uh, end play on this uh, rear end. So what I've come up with is uh, the way I ended the last video was Uh, my axle seal was leaking which I thought was the seal um, which really wasn't the seal and um, I mean it was the seal I mean it was fluid getting past the seal but that's because uh, um, what I noticed was when I took it apart was that I'm missing and I showed you um, previously here's the thrust button that I'm uh, which I believe Probably when I originally put the seal in three years ago um, I can't it's hard to believe but I believe the thrust button fell out because it was still in on the passenger side and the driver side when I looked in there um, as you saw from the video it fell out so uh, today I'm gonna attempt to put this one in because I believe I got the other one in I used a piece of double sticky tape <laughs> which uh, I don't recommend doing that. Um, the right way to do this is to take the center section out and put them back in, put the pin in, and then put it back together. And, uh, you know, and then put the axles back in and all that good jazz. You know, that, that would be the correct way to do it. Are we gonna do that today? No, no, we're not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna just try and put uh, uh, for now, we're going to try and put this driver's side pin in, and I'm going to try, I'm going to try a method today, which is using this, uh, which I bought online, which is, it's a 20, it's like a 28 inch, it's a magnet with a claw on it. You can see that claw. I can't see. There we go. So, what I'm going to attempt to do is, and I'm hoping this claw is long enough, and it's got a magnet on it, on the end. And so I'm going to put the thrust button on the end like that. And then I'm going to try and stick it in the hole inside the uh, carrier, the positive traction unit. And then it's got a claw. And then what I'm going to try and do is to release it from the magnet is like that. And if it's long enough, that should work. Because I'll stick it in the hole and then I'll release it and pull the claw back and then pull the magnet back out. If it's not long enough, I'm going to have to use another double piece of double sticky tape like I did on the other side uh, which I really don't want to do but I will if I have to because I need to get that uh, thrust button in um, so I'm gonna do this or I really probably I think I mentioned before I was just gonna you do the um, those axles uh, the new uh, bearings that I showed you but I'm not really in a good position to do that right now so I'm gonna try and fix it to where it's at least you know somewhat uh, done correctly it's where it's back together and the, the axle's not moving uh, in and out with all that end play um, just temporarily and then when I get in the uh, when I get uh, my motivation up then we'll uh, I'll have to take the whole thing apart take the third member out search for that button in there and um, put the pin in and all that stuff put the bearings in and then it'll all be done right but until then, I'm just going to try and put this uh, thrush button on this side. So I'm gonna, I'm not going to videotape the whole thing because uh, I've got uh, already got video and all that pulling the axle out. And you know, when I get back to putting the thrush uh, button in, then I'll crank the video back up. So um, you can see I got my uh, jacks over there. I've already loosened the lug nuts up, and I go ahead and just uh, get the tires, uh, get the car jacked up, get the tires off, and get the uh, drums off. Uh, that takes me a few minutes, you know. Okay, so I've got everything apart. Got the, uh, uh, to the point where I can show you um, what I'm trying to achieve is to get uh, to get this to a little bit more of a respectable, I got, I don't know, almost an eighth of an inch play here. Maybe not quite, but um, so um, 
what I just uh, showed you before on that uh, other third member um, up this is supposed to be pushed out like this because that pulls the bearing into the race all right I guess the pucks uh, are inside these axles the thing is they're different from the stock and out of where it was supposed to be and before I put the axle in I noticed that it was out and the question is I got it out with a magnet how am I going to get it back in and stay in because this magnet is is pretty tough so now I've got to figure out how I can get this back in huh, without taking the whole third member apart um, the axles still go back in and I can still move the car around but uh, yeah so uh, just thought I'd show this this is uh, on my aftermarket unit this is different so uh, if you've got I think this is a USA standard uh, this is the this is what you have here this is what's supposed to push the axle against the pucks and uh, I'm not sure if this was ever in place um, or if it came out when I originally did the axle seals I'm not sure so and I have to try and figure out how I can get them back in so I'm going to turn the camera off because it's probably going to take a long time and I'll let you know if I was successful or not. All right. Hey folks, Bob here. So uh, we left off. I was showing you the little, uh, that apparently that is the uh, standard gear, a little, that's the puck that they use. Uh, I don't know if that's um, the same as on a OEM style uh, sure grip unit I don't know because I don't have one I showed you the uh, one wheel peel version I think it's similar but don't quote me on that it may be similar to what I have and in there for a long time but I may and I haven't made a hundred percent decision to do this but I've already bought the um, I don't think this is the green bearing kit, but this is a Mopar uh, bearing kit that actually Mopar makes. And I believe uh, this is the number here. It's hard for me to, my camera's still on its tripod, so forgive me here for a second while I get you the number. I believe it's that number there. Uh, there's another another number, but Amazon, Amazon, <laughs> Amazon. I guess you already know Amazon. You can see the stickers is where I got it because it was a used item. But all the pieces were intact. You get uh, this is the main piece. This takes the place of uh, you know the loose bearings and the race. Um, you just uh, actually takes the place of everything, and you just pull your old items off. Whether you use the tool and press them off or you cut them off, uh, like they do online with a ziz wheel. Take the cage out. Take a ziz wheel, take a cold chisel and chisel them off. Or you pry them off. You simply take this piece and this is everything built together. It has the nice seal. It doesn't have an inner seal. It has the seal on the outside. And um, you just press this in place of the race and the bearing. And of course they give you new inner seals. And they give you the new collars that you you know press on after you get this on the axle so I've got that kit it's a nice kit I believe this is the way to go I know there's a lot of old timers out there that say they've uh, got many miles on the original bearings and they're right and uh, they probably need repacking and readjusting every I don't know 10 or 20 thousand miles as part of regular maintenance and you can see the those are the two pieces and then there's the pin in the center Kind of move them apart a little bit see them a little bit better there you go so the one on the drivers the passenger side was present and it pulled out it's not supposed to because it's supposed to be pinned in with that pin and I was able to get it back in temporarily and I pulled the driver's side out and it was missing of course you can see that in the video so I ordered this kit and here's the part number here So, I'm going to try and put this kit in 
I'm actually I'm not going to be able to get the pin in because uh, but what I'm going to try and do temporarily is just put one of the um, one of those thrush buttons that's missing it's on the other side actually but I'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to um, put one of those uh, you know one of these I'm going to put one of these in temporarily to try and uh, take up the slack on the um, driver's side. All right, folks, I got everything back apart, and I got the camera off the pod, and I got it uh, aimed right down the barrel of my axle, and I'm going to put the light on it, and you can see all the way in, you can see that little hole in the uh, where the splines are. Well, that hole, there's supposed to be that thrush button. And apparently it fell out or it was never in there from the get-go. I'm not 100% certain which. So right now I'm going to attempt to put it in. So uh, let me put the camera back on the tripod and then uh, we'll uh, see what we can do with this. But I just wanted to, I had to take it off and so I could get a good picture of that. And you can kind of see where that button goes. You can see that circle way in there. So all right, let me get uh, set up here and see if I can get it put in. back back again folks and I've been fishing around with this I had to wrap a um, the the little uh, mechanism that I showed you was too uh, floppy to hold itself up so I taped a um, antenna from one of our other dodges onto it to stiffen it up and I think I got the button in the hole I had, it took me a minute I had to fish around for it <clears throat> And now I'm going to pull the trigger and see if I can release the button and pull this crud back out and see if it stays in where it's supposed to be. So let's see what happens here. Because I think it jumped into the hole I can barely see in there. And the magnet still wants to connect to everything. But I believe all I've got to do now is uh, pull the trigger and hopefully it pushes the button, the magnet away from the button and I can pull this whole thing out. Uh oh, that didn't feel good. Are very hard to tell if it went into the hole. I can barely see anything. See. I think it's I think it's in there. I'm just gonna Okay, well Something didn't work right. I know it's not in there because for some reason I didn't want to release. I couldn't. I think it was in, but the button is just hard to pull when it's all the way in there. Now I can try and do it all over again. Isn't that special? Ah, well, I did have it for a minute. That's uh, very disappointing. This isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world. And I put this plastic in here to uh, keep the seal from getting damaged, but uh, it sure does get in the way quite a bit. And now I just got grease all over me. Oh boy, I don't know. I did this off camera and I guess now I'm going to try it on camera, but it wasn't easy getting it in. 
because the magnet, even though I taped the end of the magnet, it still wants to, the magnet still has some power and it wants to connect to everything inside here and not get all the way into the, where I need it to be. That's, that's just, yeah, it's, this is very difficult. There we go. I can't believe I let it get out of the hole the last time. So, with it being magnetized, it doesn't want to just jump right in the hole. And the hole is the exact size, and I'm pretty sure I had it in the hole last time. gotten it again but once it gets in the hole it won't move around and I can't move it around right now so I think it's in the hole so let's try this again see it's not on the end we'll see if it's where it's supposed to be it is it may have pulled out a little bit but what I'm going to do is take this antenna off push it back in it's not magnetized so it's in the hole Tap tappy, just, just go to your home. I guess everybody knows what that's from. Alright, gotta try and take all this tape off. I probably could just leave it just like that and shove the axle in and probably be fine, but I'm gonna try and make sure it's all the way in. Problem is, I gotta take all this tape off my setup here. So I got this little, uh, it's a pretty good little tool. I mean, it might come in handy for other stuff. It's got a magnet and then the jaws built in. Probably gonna, I might put a little more grease on my bearing too. I don't know, we'll see. Do a, whenever I get ready to put those uh, new and improved bearings in that get rid of all this of course it doesn't get rid of it doesn't get rid of these thrush pins it gets rid of the oh, there's a freaking bunch of goop on the end of my light this out because this isn't going to hurt anything I don't want any pieces of that falling in so let's put this in here and see if we can just the hole but it's like in the hole but not in the hole it's in the hole but it's loose
And it's, you know what? It's probably the pin. I got it in the hole and I can spin it. And I bet the pin or something. I mean, that feels like it's in there, but it sure feels kind of loose. And as soon as I take this off, it wants to fall right down. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's falling down. That's kind of weird. That's in place. But it's not like... It doesn't feel like it's like fitting all, all the way up in the hole like it like I feel like it should. So I did get it in there. And that's what this video is all about now. Um, I'm actually thinking it would probably it's gonna be best to I'm gonna try and push this axle in and see if uh I can get this axle seated and bolt it in with little or low, no end play. I'm going to let it go for now. But I can push it in flush a little bit more. It just kind of falls out. I should have put some, uh, I should have put some grease on it, you know, and I didn't think of that. And that way the grease would have held it in place. You know, you don't think of these, you know, I thought being as long as it was, I thought it would go all the way in and kind of, you know, seat and everything would be fine, but I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to try and shove a little more grease into these bearings. This is kind of all going to be temporary anyway. Because this winter, maybe, or possibly next spring, I'm going to redo all of this. All right, clean my hands off. And let's put the, uh, put the axle back in. I'm not going to put the, uh, my other video, I put the, um, mm -hmm. I hope I can get this in there without that pin falling out. I'm not going to put the drum on it this time. So here goes nothing. There's plenty of goop on the end of the splines and I just spilled dope all over me. So that's always special. The only thing I don't like about this is it's hard to uh, keep it off the brand new seal I just put in. And with the I guess I can try and push up on a little bit. Oh boy. I'm trying not to bang it around. And I'm not doing a very good job of it. I'm trying to keep the plate lined up. I don't know. Having the drum on might be better. If I can't lift it up. And right now it's sitting on the seal. Somebody made a comment that it was easier without the drum on, yeah? Really? And this is what it did the last time. I couldn't get it all the way in. And that 
and that may be that thrush button not going into the hole right now it should be going in it's not trying to tap on it a little bit to see I've got everything lined up and the length that it's not going in is about the length of that thrush button this is the part I don't really understand Feels like it's hitting something. If it's touching touching that thrush button, as soon as I pull it out, it's gonna fall out. I'm sure. It's hitting on something. I guarantee it's that button. Unfortunately, it's going to have to come back out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. everywhere let's see oh my goodness it's still in place believe it or not all right well let's put the axle in and spin it a little bit and try it again See if I can't destroy my seal in the process. This is the part that I had a hard time last time. <laughs> All right. And I didn't quite understand what the situation was. I don't know if it's hitting on that brush button or what, because. thinking that it might be because it's not wanting to go in well just like the last time I'm gonna have to cut this video off and uh, go get a little rubber hammer or something I'm not sure so so I can sit here and I fought with this thing the last time and it may be quite possible that the only time it went in is when the thrush button fell out so i'm gonna have to turn the video off real quick and then come back at it 
Hey folks, Bob here. All right, so, uh, you know, I eventually figured out what was going on and I was kind of correcting my thinking in that uh, that axle was going in, so I just, well, I thought I'd let the sirens go by, but here's another one. Hope it's nothing serious. Uh, anyhow, so when I was pushing that axle in, pushing that uh, little thrush washer in, which I was kind of hoping it was, I guess it was sticking out so far is because I had pushed, because that thrush uh, button had fallen out. When I tightened this axle to get the end play out, it was pushing over the puck. It was pushing that axle out that way. So that's why that axle, I got it in, but and I was only able to get the bolts uh, and the axle plate was tight, a little bit tight on the bottom, but it had an eighth of an inch of gap on top or more. And I kept tightening it and pushing it and tightening it. And uh, I came over here one time to check and see if it was pushing this over and it didn't, this still had a little tiny bit of play. So I kept going and kept going and just kept tightening it to where I got it all the way tight. And then I came over here and this was absolutely tight and I couldn't even, I couldn't even, uh, turn the adjuster screw that's how tight it had gotten so I had to take these backing bolts off about an eighth of an inch um, which was then I was able to get the uh, the adjuster nut loose and back it off about an eighth of an inch once I did that I was able to get these back on and now this one's loose like it should be and the other one should be still should be tight let me go check Now see the other one has loosened up since I've done this so and I don't want it that loose so I'm gonna have to um, I was in the process of readjusting it back tight and uh, I hope I don't have to go through this all over again but um, so I'm gonna tighten it back up because I've got to tell you I've got this play here that I got to get rid of and it looks like I now I've got play back on the other side. So what I'm doing here, so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. You probably can't see it, but I'm turning the adjuster nut in to get rid of this play. And you can see right now I've got zero lash right here. So um, you're supposed to use a, like a brass or a soft hammer, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use what I got, which is this. I'm just going to tap on it a little bit. I'm going to go check the other side. That's perfect. The other side tightened up. Right? So, my whole issue this whole time was that um, as you adjust this and you kind of can tap it a little bit, it pushes on the center um, puck which those thrush buttons they those thrush buttons go into the puck and as you push this side it pushes the other bearing into its race takes up the slack and I just proved that because this was loose and I had play here and I had play over there and I tightened this uh, adjuster up and uh, now I have no play over there and I have almost zero play here so I'm going to back it off a little. Okay. I'm very close to adjustment because that right there, I can feel it moving. That's probably five thousandths. And you know how I know? Because I was just watching a video on them setting up a uh, ring and pinion on a differential. And that movement right there was about five thousandths. And you can't, you can't see it because it's, I can feel it. Um, um. What I'm going to do is, because these bearings are worn and this stuff, once it starts turning, it's going to 
uh, it's going to wear just a little bit. I'm just going to barely snug it just a, a little bit more because I don't want it loose. See, there's still just, you can hear that. And I've got up and down play too, see, so that's because my bearings are probably old. And I don't want to put a ton of pressure on my bearings because they are old. But I also don't want them sagging, which is causing my leaks. So I'm going to snug mine a little tighter rather than leave them looser. And some people say to even just go to zero lash. So um, now what I've got to do is get up under here and I've got to put this back on. That's got to match up with the spot on the adjuster. Which I either have to go looser. Or I'm gonna to have to go tighter so let me see let me see if I can go one more notch tighter I think that's I think that's better tighter one more notch let's see yeah that's better so it looks like I'm gonna to have to back up just a little bit anyway there we go perfect that's perfect I'm sure as it uh, everything starts spinning and the bearings seat back in after all this messing around it's gonna both sides will have just a scotch of play in them so as they say um, tolerance will open up you just don't want to put them super tight if you put them tight if you preload them some people say to preload if you preload them you run the risk of you know, burning out the uh, bearings, I can't get to it. I gotta spin this a little bit. There we go. And I think these are 35 foot pounds or something like that, 35, 40. Like I said before, they're 5 16th. They're not very they're old so they you don't want to put a whole lot of torque on them i think that's about 35. So i'm going to go around the i'm going to go around the world make sure they're all tight that one's tight It. Now, for some reason, this posi traction unit won't spin backwards. Well, but it's not easy. That's tight. I think the rest of them I already tightened up. I just wanted to double check or put it all back together. Tight. Okay, finally, I have finally cracked the mystery of the end play adjustment on the eight and three quarter. So I'm going to, as you can see, there's no, you're supposed to have some say six to 18, some say none. Um, I can still feel my bearing moving around just a little bit, so I know it's not super tight. And I had play and I only went one notch, one small. I know that sometimes that's all it takes, but when this stuff all settles in, I think it's going to get play back in it. So um, I don't want to leave excessive play in it. And I'm pretty happy about this. Let's go check the other side. And I've got no play here either. I can feel it. It doesn't feel super, super tight. I can still feel the bearing moving up and down just a little bit, moving around just a little bit, but 
I mean, before I had eighth to three sixteenths of inch play, and that was the reason why this uh, was leaking in the first place. So I think this is perfect. They're going to break in a little bit once it starts spinning. It's not like I'm going to California with it, so I'll take it on some short trips and then I'll recheck it. But um, I'm going to call this a done stamp. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to put it back together. I'm not going to bore you with that because I've already shown you on other videos. Um, it's just reverse, put the drums on and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, this is going to be the part two or maybe part three. So take a look at this again. I know I posted it two or three years ago and uh, I hope this clears up. There were some questions and uh, I think this is going to be a little... Uh, uh, I think this uh, this uh, video is going to clear up a lot of questions on the, this whole process. Now, one thing I did want to mention was that um, I this did leak, and part of that leaking is because um, more than likely the outer there's an inner seal which I show replacing, but the outer seal is on the axle between the bearing race and this plate, and it's on rides on the inside. When that seal goes bad, which this side is probably is because everything was this side of the car sat in the sun and um, rotted everything faster on this side of the car than it did on the other side. Brake lines and hoses and everything. Um, so that seal is probably bad. And as long as the dope doesn't get into it, the wheel bearing grease doesn't want to come out. It doesn't come out really easy. The wheel bearing grease does. And it must be good enough just to hold the bearing grease in. But if axle fluid gets in there and liquefies that grease, it comes out because that seal is bad. So this ought to tide me over um, until I can get those other bearings put in. So I uh, hope this helps you out. Um, if you try and tackle this project yourself, you definitely can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Like some other uh, popular uh, YouTuber says up north there. Um, good guy. Check out his channel. South Bain Auto. Uh, he's a the guy's a magician. He knows everything. Uh, he's an electrical freaking wizard, and uh, he's got a great channel. So check him out. Check uh, like and subscribe on his channel, and definitely thumbs up on me. And you know, share this out uh, when you're watching those uh, other videos because I'm going to be posting more stuff here soon. And I'd appreciate it. So thanks for watching, and have yourself a great day, and good luck with your projects. Take care. So I just wanted to mention, uh, in case I didn't, um, on the going back together procedure, make sure you check before you put your axles in if you have a sure grip uh, with either factory or the aftermarket that your thrush buttons are still in place before you put your axles in or you're going to experience what I just experienced over the last three years. So. Uh, take a flashlight, shine up in there just like I did. Make sure they're still in place and they didn't fall down. Um, and they're sitting on the splines. They are. You can still grab them with a magnet and put them in just like I showed. Uh, but if you don't check them and then you push them out of the way and they fall down into the uh, bottom of your third member, of course, you won't realize it until it's too late and, the diff loop and your axle seals are leaking. But, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check in there before you put them back together. And um, that's kind of one thing I didn't mention, and I wanted to mention it. Uh, I think there was something else too, but I can't remember now. Uh, I want to show this bolt. This is a left-hand threaded bolt, and just for my reference, it is in 12-20-LH, left-hand thread. And these acorn nuts are horrible. I'm having a hard time getting them on and off, so I want to replace them. Um, yep, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, I'll, I'll stick this in. Uh, so yeah, so, and you can tap on the other side a little bit to move it over. Again, you can. I use that ball peen. Um, you can use uh, another type mallet, and uh, just make sure that. Now I remember what it was. Make sure that you put the driver side axle in and bolt it in first. Um, of course before you put the passenger side in that has the adjuster so back the adjuster off a little bit and then tighten it up a little push it in tighten a little check your uh, check your driver side leave it loose don't put it back together so you can feel the uh, 
so you can feel the tolerance in it, how much uh, plays in it until you get it to where you want it. And then you can tighten everything up. So I just wanted to mention that. And uh, yeah.